Do you think there's any use or learning in trying to copy perfumes you already like and balance it to smell the same as something you know you already like? If you can cope with disappointment. Yeah, um, the trouble with trying to copy one of your favourite perfumes is that even most good perfumers can't do that and not get it exactly right. By nose, that is. By nose, but even by GCMS. Um, because, uh, and that would be gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, mm -hmm. which you heard of, but that's... Um, that's analysing, so you can take a perfume, you can analyse it, you can find out bit by bit by bit by bit by bit what's a wheel, we don't mind sound effects. Right. Um, Arthur's thirsty. Um, so you will get a printout, so you know, a list of all the individual aroma chemicals that are in it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way that people copy fragrances is that they'll then pick the ones that stand out most and it's fairly convincing copy. Um, but if where where do you think you would go for the information that told you what was it? where would you start trying to copy say your favorite fragrance i mean just probably, like where would you go probably their website to look at the notes that it says are in it yeah well notes are not what's in it notes oh. are what it smells of oh, i suppose yeah and then if i wanted to be scientific then look at the mass spectrometry but also i hate mass spectrometry so and most Not. people, don't, but people don't have access to that necessarily. They can sometimes people can buy the GCMS report mm -hmm. that somebody else has done, but you don't really know whether it's totally yeah. accurate. Even my perfumer friends who work for big companies, they just go, "But you know, it's never going to be the same because whatever is in there, there'll be tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of things that people have put in because, say." Well, this this black currant base is made of lots of different aroma chemicals. If they've used one percent of that in their fragrance, then there'll be one percent of those tiny amounts of aroma chemicals in there, and they might be the same weight as something else that's come up. It'll it's very mm. very difficult. The the yeah. GCMS is never going to be totally one hundred percent right. They might think, oh, that looks a bit like the profile of. Because he's based 345B, might not necessarily be right. But say you look at the notes list, the, a pyramid, and it says on it mango and peony and ebony wood. There's no natural mango, there's no natural mm -hmm. fig, yeah, no, <laughs> his favourite, and there's no natural ebony wood. None of those things are actually used in making perfumery. So and I know lots of people turn up here to do workshops and they say, have you got ebony? I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> have you got peony? No. So it's, it, it's really difficult even for people who do know what they're doing. Um, after a while you get the hang of thinking, oh, I think maybe I recognise that kind of a mm -hmm. smell. And you're able to sort of put things together in that style. But to start, I would say that's a, probably the most difficult thing you can start okay. with. So m my question is, um, let's say that your only knowledge of perfume and what's in perfume is has come from notes lists. Mm. You've spent your life reading notes lists, getting mm. accustomed to what things you like on notes lists and what. Is there any use? in that, in, in, in using notes lists to work out what you like, what kind of things you sort of like, is that, is there any value in it? That's a very good question and I'm not sure I'm going to give a very good answer. For, for example, I mean like, you know, I know that if I was to read a notes list that says black pepper on it. Yes. I know it's that I quite like that. probably got black pepper in it, yeah. Right, okay. As it says bergamot, it's probably got bergamot in it. Uh -huh. But as soon as you go sort of beyond four things on a notes list, nobody really can tell what they are. No, the human brain can sort of pick out four different things. Um, perfumers might know from experience how those four things are basically put together, or they might get the general feel and go, Okay, that's a fougère. So if that's a fougère, I know that it's probably got 
a bit of eremos and some coumarin and some lavender in I get that feeling and it's mm, it's an aquatic one so it's probably got a bit of so you can begin to put together pieces of the jigsaw but um, I know I know people who have studied what you say a lot the notes lists and know a lot about what's written about perfume from an enjoying perfume point of view and then they'll come to a workshop and smell a thing and go what oh what that's what cedarwood smells like and and get a surprise so i really think that there's very little substitute for just smelling materials even if it's just you know ringing me up and asking if you can come here and smell everything on the shelf mm -hmm. which is indeed what you have started to do have you had mm -hmm. any surprises smelling things on the shelf and thinking uh tuberose didn't smell i thought it smelled but like why i've smelled it in other things it doesn't smell at all like that no because with a tuberose note uh, it doesn't smell like the tuberose flower and tuberose perfumes quite often are Quite kind of plasticky doll's head chewing gum smells anyway. Um, tuberose absolute, which is made out of the flower, smells kind of, well very weird. Yeah. And not you, in order to get the smell of the flower, you have to put other things in. Um, yeah. Yeah. I sort of wanted to mention pheromones, which. There aren't any that you can add to perfumes that make you irresistible. And so ph pheromones, am I right in thinking? We do have pheromone receptors in our nose, but they're just not Going connected to, to the anything. brain anymore. Yeah, we we can detect certain chemical signals, which hu well humans can detect chemical signals, which um, are for anger anxiety, happiness, and something else that I've forgotten. But there are, so we can feel the mood in a room. And I always give the example, I saw it on a, a television program, that dogs will go, you know, if they worry about something, and the human will go, oh, don't worry about it. And there was one on a television program, an Italian detective series last night, that dog suddenly turns around and goes, because it can smell the, the tension and the danger. Um, and uh, humans, we do detect them, but we sort of ignore them, but we can feel them. But there are no human pheromone detectors. And the whole thing about pheromones and these materials which are sold as pheromones, which I don't get the ads for, but... I get the ads for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I just blocked them. Yeah, maybe I should try and do that. It's all about if you put it on, it will attract all the men and... Who really wants that? Yeah, I, 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 yeah the, <laughs> that's, that's the thing, is the the idea, I mean, first of all, I find it quite unpleasant that the ads that I saw when I was doing some research on it are all like, yeah, wear this and women will do whatever you want. It's like, mm, we don't want that in this world. That's yes, really, yeah. creepy. Also, like, there's, uh, I just don't think that that women have potentially particularly got a problem with men <laughs> approaching them, really. Uh, no, no, we're not, not in need. That. Not in need of that, no. generally speaking. Just no, leave it. I mean, it so, I, actually, I was on I was so, on the radio not long ago talking sorry. about this. Uh, sorry, but, just, yeah. well, well, what's interesting about the, the whole, like, rhetoric around pheromones, I know you just, you just sort of hinted at it, but it is basically sort of mind control is mm. what the rhetoric around it is. It's like, how can you, it's like, how can you... Magically make someone behave the way that you want them to make. Yeah. Or what behave the way you want them to be. Yeah. And it's like like some kind of tractor beam. You imagine if you put the pheromone on, it'll go yeah. draw yeah, towards yeah, yeah. me. Um, the thing is that they do sort of work in that if people put them on and they feel that they're more attractive, be more confident. Yeah, they're a bit more confident, and they're probably as long as they don't think it actually makes them irresistible. Uh, but if they feel like, hmm, okay, I'm ready to go out now, or I'm ready to stay in, then that kind of just gives people a little bit of a boost, and that's this is fine. But and also smelling nice is incredibly attractive. It's, it's lovely. A good thing. It's lovely. It's a lovely thing. Why would you not want to smell nice? Exactly. You want to be around people that smell nice. 
And there was a whole thing about, uh, you know, doing lockdown and all the rest, the people who put on perfume to stay in because it makes them feel great. And then there's another bunch of people, well, why would you do that if you're not going out and looking to attract someone? It's like, no, 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 that's not why we wear perfume. Yeah. Um, so, but no, do not, do not buy these things and add them to your perfume thinking that it's going to make you irresistible because it isn't. And they cost a lot of money. I've smelled some of them. One of them, some people can't smell at all. Other people, it smells a bit like sandalwood. And I thought it smelled quite nice. But um, it's phenomenally expensive. Phenomenally Fer expensive. Phenomenally, phenomenally expensive. But they don't work. Also, like, being irresistible would be a nightmare. Oh, God. Yeah. Think of the happening. He knows. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I was going to uh, add something, actually, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, this chemical you know. signal of um, yeah. happiness. Yeah. Where's the bottle of that? Yeah, yeah can I put fun. that on, sniff it every day, yeah. fill my house with it? Yeah. Yeah, Clinique Happy. Yeah, I think, um, I like to think, I'm not sure. I think it's citrus fruits. I think they absorb so much sunshine, it just makes them go, yeah. Yeah. And so then when you use citrus essential oils, like smelling bergamot, how can people not, unless they've had a bad experience with Earl Grey tea, I, I think, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. But I yes, think this would it. be good, wouldn't it? But you know when you walk into a room, like, look, oh, happy place. Yeah. So that's humans, we are actually signalling to each other. And whether you have a perfume on top of that or not, still works. What, what, what? I just thought something really corny. Doesn't matter. I was going to say. Suck it to us. Essentially, yeah, because all ingredients, are, the natural ones are grown. Mm. Well, even the synthetic ones grew originally and then got and then became other things mm. and then you know. Yeah. Um, and all things that grow um, need the sun. So essentially, you're bottling sunshine. Bottle sunshine. Um, oh, yes, bottled that happy. Yeah. That's what we want. We want. Can we add happy to a perfume? Not very much. That'd be good. Uh, I think I think we do it if you if we while well, we stir while we bottle if we smile, then um, if we smile while we stir, it happy will come out of the bottle. That's what I think. And that's science. Totally. One day science will prove this. At mm -hmm. the moment, it's just magic. 